this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made the crankshaft for my Kawasaki S1 550 four-cylinder engine. In the last video, I stripped down two Kawasaki S1 engines and removed both the crankshafts and gearbox components. So now, I can take the two crankshafts into my garage to strip them down into their individual component parts to make a new four-cylinder crankshaft. The first thing I'm going to do is pull the bearings off the crankshaft. They're quite tight, so I have to use a special bearing puller. I fitted aluminium soft jaws to the vise to protect the crankshaft, so now I can fit the first crankshaft vertically and start removing the bearings. But before I can do that, I've got to remove this little wire clip that holds the outer bearing in place. It's easily removed with two screwdrivers. So now the bearing can be removed from the crankshaft, but it's really tight, so I have to use my special bearing extractor tool. The bearing extractor tool has four individual legs that slot into the ball race without causing any damage. With the four legs in place, the central column is inserted onto the end of the crankshaft with a collar that pulls the legs upwards, pulling off the bearing. I use my socket set ratchet to turn the central column. This pulls the bearing up. Sometimes it can be really tight, but they come off eventually. Well, that's the first bearing off. And amazingly, it feels really smooth and nice, but I'm gonna be replacing it with new ones. I remove the crankshaft from the vise and take it over to my hydraulic press, ready to press out the first big end journal. These can be really tight. My hydraulic press has made this squeak since the day I bought it over 20 years ago, but it seems to work okay. With the end flywheel web removed, I can now remove the com rod, big end bearing and thrust washers. I give the crank pin a wipe with some cloth and it looks in really nice condition. So the next thing I need to do is put the crankshaft back in my hydraulic press and press off the next flywheel web. I've got a collection of old crank pins and they make perfect push bars. So that's the second flywheel web removed. So now I've got to remove the next two bearings and inner crankshaft seal. So I put the crankshaft back in my vise and tighten it up on my aluminium soft jaws. Then I use my special bearing puller to pull off the first bearing. And this one's really tight, but it moves eventually. And that's the second bearing removed. It looks in quite good condition, really. But the seals are completely had it, rock hard, and they're very loose fit on the inner collar. So they're going to be replaced with brand new ones. With the third bearing removed, I put the crankshaft back in the hydraulic press and separate the next flywheel web. And then I can remove the next connection rod and the big end bearings. Being a three-cylinder crankshaft, it's a repetitive job taking it apart, but basically it goes backwards and forwards to my hydraulic press and bearing extractor until it's stripped down to its last flywheel. I then clean all the crankshaft components with my rotary wire brush. Copper plated connection rods come up really well. They look almost brand new. There's no wear on the tracks, so I can reuse those. With the rotary wire brush cleaning complete, I give them a wipe over with some brake cleaner just to remove any residue. Considering the age of these crankshaft components, I'm really pleased how well they've cleaned up. They look like they're freshly machined. With all the parts cleaned, they are now ready to be built up into a new four-cylinder crankshaft, and these parts over here will be spare for future projects.
The new crankshaft will take eight main bearings, so I bought all new ones, and the seals are also new. These are OEM spec, made in Japan. With all the parts present and correct, I can start assembling the new four-cylinder crankshaft. So the first thing I need to do is fit the first set of bearings and seals. I first apply a thin smear of grease to the inner surface of the seal before pressing in the inner collar. It's a nice tight fit and it grips really well. That's how it should be, not all loose and floppy like the old ones. The seal fits between two bearings and slides onto one side of the crankshaft and the other bearing slides onto the other side, but they don't actually slide. They have to be pressed on in my hydraulic press. I position two old crank pins onto the bearings, making sure they're resting on the inner track, and then bring the ram down to take up the pressure and then pump it down. They're quite easy at first, then they become very stiff, and at the end they go click into place and you know you're home. With the first two bearings and seal pressed on, I turn the crankshaft round and press on the outer bearing. With the first stage of the crankshaft complete, I trial fit it in the crankcases just to make sure everything's in line and the snap ring groove is in the correct place, which it is. Then I have to position the next flywheel web at 180 degrees and to do this, I put it in my lathe. I then fit an old Kawasaki KH250 crank pin into the tool post. This can then be slid in and engaged into the little end eye of the first connecting rod. I then adjust the cross slide to rotate the crankshaft so the big end is in the upright position. Then the spindle degree disc is set to zero and the chuck tightened. The saddle is now wound back, disengaging the crank pin from the little end journal. The chuck is then rotated 180 degrees and lined up with the bottom dead centre on my degree disc. The next flywheel web and comrod is engaged with the crank pin on the tool post stub, swung down and engaged with the centre crankshaft then pressed up lightly with a piece of aluminium to hold it square. When it's engaged, I give it a little bit more turn just to make sure it locks in position. Then the crankshaft is removed from the lathe, taken over to my hydraulic press for this flywheel web to be pressed in place. I check the assembly in the lower crankcase and it fits perfect and both crank pins are 180 degrees apart now. So the next thing I need to do is lock that flywheel web in position on the shaft by drilling a new hole and pressing in a 5mm hardened pin. I use my electric drill to drill a 4.9mm hole and the hole is half in the shaft and half in the flywheel web. I then use my garage vacuum cleaner to suck up the swarf. Using a pair of long nose pliers, I pick up the location pin and offer it up to the hole and push it in place with my finger. Then I use a suitably sized pin punch and a hammer to tap it in place. It can be quite tight. To ensure the pin doesn't creep out during running, I go around with a centre punch and peen the edge over. Using some brake cleaner, I clean around the crank pin area, ready to assemble the next connecting rod. I then clean the next flywheel with some brake cleaner, ready to press on. I then put a drop of oil on the big end bearing, fit the thrust washer and fit the next flywheel web. <laughs> 
lining it up with a set square so that it's in line with the one before. I gently apply pressure until the flywheel is engaged with a crank pin and then continue until the crank pin is flush with the outer side of the flywheel. I then remove the crankshaft and place it back in the lower crankcases to check for run out. I set up my dial test indicator to check for run out of the shaft and it's about 5 thou out, which isn't bad for the first test. I mark the high spot on the crankshaft flywheel web with a marker pen, then remove the crankshaft and hit it with a copper hammer to try and jar it into position. It's quite amazing how hard you have to hit it even to move it a couple of thou. I put the crankshaft back into the lower crankcases and recheck with my DTI, and I'm really pleased when it's running within one thousandth of an inch. With the next two bearings and oil seal pressed on, I return the crankshaft to the lathe to set up the next flywheel web. I set up the first connecting rod onto the crank pin that's located into the tool post, then rotate the crankshaft to set the position on my degree disc, and then rotate another 90 degrees. This will set the position for the third connecting rod. I move the saddle back, then engage the third connecting rod with the crank pin that's located into the tool post, and gently push it onto the crankshaft. Using a block of aluminium to keep it square, then I apply just a bit of force using the tailstock to lock it in place. I then remove the crankshaft and replace it into the lower crankcases to check it rotates freely, which it does. So then I'll put it back in my press to press on the next flywheel web. With the crankshaft located in the press, I put on the first thrust washer, the big end bearing, the connecting rod and a drop of oil. Then I put the last thrust washer and offer up the flywheel web ready for pressing. Before I start pressing down the flywheel, I check it's in line with one below using my square. The more accurate it is now, it makes it easier when you're tapping it true later on with a copper hammer. I find it really satisfying watching the flywheel webs come together, and when it's finally pressed together, I lift the crankshaft out and put it back in the lower crankcase to check for run out, and to my surprise, it's better than a thousandth of an inch. I am well pleased, that saved a lot of hammering. I press on the next two bearings and the oil seal. Then I return it to the lathe to set up the fourth connecting rod. This time I lock the third com rod onto the tool post crank pin. Then I slide the saddle back and fit the fourth flywheel web and cotton rod. I hold the flywheel web in place and rotate the crankshaft back 180 degrees to set the correct position. I then apply a bit of pressure with the tailstock to hold it in place. So with the fourth flywheel set, I'm really thirsty. Even Charlie Weaver's having a couple of drinks, so I think I'll pop in and get a cup of tea. I go in the kitchen and Tracy's making cupcakes, but not any cupcakes. These are Christmas cupcakes. She's already added a few blobs of butter and then she adds some sugar. And then after a short whiz in the mixer, she adds three eggs, followed by a bit of flour. Then another whisker. I think Tracy likes using the whisker. She seems to use it quite a lot.
And now for the cherries. I told her to put the whole pot in, but she wouldn't. She only put in half, well, plus one, so I guess that's enough. And then, mince meat. That adds the Christmas flavour. These cupcakes are Christmas cupcakes, so they have Christmas cupcake holders. So she spoons it out one dollop at a time to make sure they're all even. When all the mixture's in, she puts them in the oven and cooks them for about 20 minutes. And when they come out, they look amazing. These cupcakes are going to have marzipan Christmas trees on the top, which would be really nice. I really like marzipan. Using her wooden rolling pin, she rolls the marzipan down to exactly three millimetres thick and then stamps out some Christmas tree shapes. With the Christmas tree shapes cut out, she places them on top of the cupcakes and they fit just perfect and look amazing. I can't wait to try one. I take one back out in the garage with me with my cup of tea, but before I've got to the lathe, I've eaten it. It was so nice. Back to the crankshaft, I'm just about to fit the last web by putting it into my press and pressing it on. And when it's pressed in place, I'll be going over to the vise to drill the holes for the last securing dowel. I then take the crankshaft back to the press to press on the end flywheel web and put it back in the crank cases and it looks great. I'm really pleased with that. So the last thing to do is check the run out on the end shaft. Well, this flywheel web pressed up really nice as well. That's running within a thousandth of an inch. So that'll do just nicely. I then return the crankshaft to the press to press on the last bearing. I return the crankshaft to the lower crankcase and it fits brilliant. So I give it a little turn and I'm really pleased with that. So the next thing I need to do is put on the bearing retaining clip. I always find it easier to assemble the crankshaft drive side when it's out of the bike. So I first grip it in my vise, then I put on the collar for the oil seal, followed by the little O-ring. I tap in the Woodruff key with a punch. These can sometimes be a bit tight. I then put the new oil seal in place, followed by the drive gear, the lock washer and the nut, doing it up really tight with a big spanner. I then gently tap over the tab washer with a flat bottomed punch, and then fit the oil pump drive gear. And that's the crankshaft finished, with its 1423 firing order. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really pleased how the crankshaft turned out. It fits perfect in the crankcases. So in the next video, I can show you how I made the gearbox extension shaft and assembled the bottom end. I think our hedgehogs have gone into hibernation. We have had this visiting squirrel. He's really funny to watch.